We know what it's doing, we know where it's spreading, but where did COVID-19 come from? That's the first thing we're looking for today on CNN 10, and we're happy to have you along for the hunt. I'm Carl Azus. The first known cases of the new coronavirus appeared last December in Wuhan, China. It's a city in the east central part of the country. At first, scientists widely believed the outbreak started at a seafood and animal market in Wuhan, that someone came into contact with COVID-19 there and then began spreading it to others. But now, researchers are divided on that explanation because some of the first people with the disease reportedly hadn't been to the market. Since December, China says it's had more than 82,000 cases of coronavirus, that more than 3,300 people have died from it, and that more than 77,000 have recovered. But some international observers and health officials have suggested the numbers might be higher than that. They've accused the Chinese government of not telling the whole truth when it comes to the number of cases and deaths from coronavirus. Chinese government officials say they've given open, transparent, and timely updates, and they've accused nations like the United States of trying to politicize the virus. Because there's so much mystery about it, there are a number of conspiracy theories surrounding COVID-19, beliefs that an accident or even intentional action by humans led to the virus's spread. But some of the scientists who track down the origins of diseases say that's not what happened. CNN has spoken to a half dozen virus hunters who right now say anyone who claims they know the exact source of the novel coronavirus is guessing. Did it come from bats? Most likely. Chinese researchers have already determined the coronavirus is 96% identical at the whole genome level to a bat coronavirus. 27 public health scientists from across the U.S. and the world wrote this letter in the journal Lancet condemning conspiracy theories and citing scientific evidence, including the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, that supports the theory that overwhelmingly conclude that this coronavirus originated in wildlife, as have so many other emerging pathogens. The common thread is wildlife. These pathogens emerge from wildlife. One of those scientists is one of the most preeminent virus hunters in the world, Peter Daszak. Because we'd been doing this work in China for 10 years, we had a whole series of genetic sequences of viruses we found with our colleagues. So when they got a new virus in people, the cause of COVID-19, they could compare it to what they'd seen in bats. So they knew straight away, this is likely a bat origin virus. And because it has that 96% comparison rate to what was actually in a bat, that's why you're saying it's very, very likely this did come from a bat, although we don't know what this, where this strain actually came from. We're very confident that the origin of COVID-19 is in bats. We just don't know where exactly it originated. That's what we need to do now. Ooh, just a bat. It is a genetic detective story. Researchers will trace the virus that is killing thousands to a yet-to-be-captured bat in the wild, to a potential animal that became the crossover vehicle for COVID-19. Yes, the virus could have transferred directly from bat to human, but most likely, says Dashik, it was bats infecting farmed animals, the animals brought to market alive, and kept with people in one of the most perfect incubators for viral infection, the Chinese wet market. It's called zoonotic spillover. Professor Andrew Cunningham with the Zoological Society of London has studied them for decades. Wet markets, these live animal markets, are certainly a very good way of, um, if you like, trying to get a virus to spill over into people from wildlife. They're susceptible to getting viruses or other pathogens from the environment or from other animals that they wouldn't naturally come into close contact with, again, because they're stressed. Uh, and then they can become virus factories and they're in close contact with human beings in the markets and they're butchered in the markets um, by people in relatively unhygienic conditions. Other researchers point to reports from China that some of the earliest cases were not associated with the wet market. Tensions between the U.S. and China over the origins of the virus and accusations of misinformation from both sides are slowing the work of the virus hunters who are grounded by the same travel restrictions that have crippled the world. That is concerning because without knowing where it came from, there is still a chance that original host species is spreading it. 10 second trivia. Which of these U.S. landmarks was completed last? 
Empire State Building, Alcatraz Island Prison, Hoover Dam, or Golden Gate Bridge? These landmarks are in order from oldest to youngest. The Golden Gate Bridge was finished in 1937. The US Navy wanted it to be painted black and yellow so it would be visible. The Army Air Corps wanted red and white for the same reason. But the consulting architect of the Golden Gate Bridge liked the color of the primer used to coat the steel. So that's the color he kept it. It was named International Orange, and the bridge is the next stop in our series of virtual vacations. The Golden Gate Bridge gets its name because it spans what's called the Golden Gate Strait. This is a three mile long and one mile wide body of water that connects the Pacific Ocean to the San Francisco Bay. Before the Golden Gate Bridge, there was a bustling ferry system uh, that ran people and commerce between San Francisco and the Redwood Empire to the north. It's actually unknown how many people worked on the Golden Gate Bridge at the time of construction uh, because records were, were scarce from that time. Uh, today we have close to 200 employees who work to maintain, to paint, to weld, to uh, make sure that the bridge is in, in good and safe operating condition. So we're right now getting sandblasting on the outer part of the bridge, which is up underneath. Right now, where, where the walkway is, where the pedestrians ride after 3.30, so the cars are probably just about 15 feet out. You can't feel it, but the bridge is probably moving you know, like this, as we're standing. In a containment like this, a rough estimate, 16 people sandblasting for a month and a half. Our painters will go out to the most critical, you know, structural areas of the bridge where the fog and the salt and the wind has corroded the paint. The salt eats this bridge up, the fog eats this bridge up. If we don't continue to paint it, it's just gonna rot away. Right here is one of our foghorns. We have two of them down here, one over, one on the east side, one on the west side. We've always had foghorns here at the bridge since, the, since it was built. Not much changes in foghorns, they just make noise. We tried automated systems that just doesn't, doesn't work. So the, the old standby system of actually visually seeing works the best because there's people here 24 seven. So as of July of 2018, the toll to cross the Golden Gate Bridge is $7 if you have a fast track or $8 if you don't, maybe you're up from out of town. And this supports much of the work that happens on a daily basis to maintain the bridge, to keep it looking good and ensure that it's accessible for everyone. For 10 out of 10, it's not every day you get to use the word siphonophore. Then again, it's not every day you get to see one that looks like giant circles of silly string. This is a sea creature, or really a whole colony of them, that was recently captured on camera curlicued in the Indian Ocean. The Schmidt Ocean Institute says this could be the biggest siphonophore ever recorded with an outer ring that stretches 154 feet. I've made a pun on a siphonophore siphona before. First, I strung together three ocean puns, like it was a sight to see, it made waves, and then I was able to siphon off four. They're always fun to string along, even if they're a bit silly. I guess whether or not you like ocean puns depends on your depth perception. I'm Carl Azus. Mitchell District High School is in Mitchell, Ontario, Canada. You guys are awesome for subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's a wrap for CNN.